Good morning, happy Monday, happy Monday, Monday, it is awesome, you are joining me here for Unstoppable Live, uh, Unstoppable Entrepreneur Live, uh, season two, episode number five, and today I am super excited to be sharing with you all things blogging for profit. Now, when you guys are coming on, let me know that you can hear me, that would be the most excellent thing, first and foremost. Now, there are a whole lot of things out there, right, about using your, using your website and using your blog for profit. There is a ton of stuff out there about all of this. And I think one of the really big questions is, yeah, okay, that sounds really great. Um, how do I know, first and foremost, what it is that I need to do? How do I need to do it? Why is it important? Hey, good morning, everyone. Um, and, and I think really what I wanted to share with you today is how you can really start to leverage this, the blogging thing, okay? Because I'm a firm believer of doing nothing unless it's going to uh, fit in with your overall plan, your overall intention, your overall strategy. And really, if we think about it, the biggest thing that we really want to be doing in terms of marketing and everything like that, we wanna be able to get a return on it. We wanna be able to leverage it. So what does that look like? You know, for some people, a return might be the, the number of interactions on it, the number of comments, it might be the number of leads that they can generate, things like that. But that's really the first thing that you need to understand is what is it, uh, like, what are you doing it for? What is it that you are wanting to get out of putting out a blog? Now, for some of us, we just do it because we know it's valuable and we enjoy it and we know that people can get great value from it and things like that. For some people, it's just like, it's purely done because you have to. So know why it is that you're doing it. Now, I remember in 2010 when I knew that I was going to have to start blogging and I was a little bit scared. Um, in fact, I was actually more than a little bit scared. I was freaking petrified, right? I had come out of a 12-year corporate banking career that was all very, very professional, very straight-laced, you know, suit-wearing, very proper kind of thing. Like, in order to be taken seriously, we had to be incredibly professional. And so some of the, actually a lot of the really early videos and blogs that I filmed, I was very much uh, sitting very straight. My hair was like perfect and I wouldn't, you know, like I speak with my hands normally and there was no hand movements. I was so afraid of putting myself out there in a way that I thought would be perceived as being unprofessional in the way of uh, not creating a really great first impression, I guess, was something that I was, I was terribly petrified of and I was really worried about what other people would think of me. You know, would they agree with me? Would they disagree? What if I went and put myself out there and all of a sudden all of these people were like, Nicola, you sound like an idiot. And, you know, I had all of that real kind of like negative self-talk going on and I really, really, when I, I look back, I really wanted everything to be perfect. I wanted the the uh, the quality of the video to be perfect. I wanted the backdrop to be perfect. I wanted my voice to be perfect. I wanted the editing to be perfect. But what I learned, right, was I spent so much time trying to get everything, and I, and I still, every now and again I try this, like I try and get everything set up beautifully and the sets all right and everything else. and. Really, that, that's a really great form of procrastination, you know, if we're completely brutally honest. You know, if you don't have a, a studio set up that is, that its sole job is for your blogging studio, for example, you know, that can take a whole lot of time. So what I learned from that whole entire process is that it is more important to get your stuff out there than it is for everything to be perfect and professional, unless you are a set creator for people or unless you are a, an editor, you know, that, that's, or a, a filmographer, you know, different kind of thing. But it is more important to just get it out there and get that message heard and get your stuff out there because the content, more often than not, is a lot more important than the things in the background looking all pretty or the sound being perfect or the editing being seamless, right? Just get yourself out there. So that's really the first thing. So 
just make it happen. Throw yourself out there and make this shit happen, okay? Because your people need to hear from you. Which kind of leads us into the next thing. You know, what is it that you are going to say and things like that. So first and foremost, you need to know who you're talking to because if you want to profit from the blogging that you are doing, it has got to be relevant to the people that you want to work with, all right? So you want to be able to create relevant content on your blog in order for it to resonate with people. So you might have people that have got a, that need help with their mindset. Maybe they need to find their purpose. Maybe they're lacking clarity. Maybe they need to get some, a kick in the ass to be more accountable. Maybe they need, if you're a money coach, maybe they need some structure and some systems around how to manage their money. You, you need to start to really be able to get into the psychology of your people. Because here's the thing, on your blog, my opinion of having a blog or having your website for a business owner, okay, like yourself, so this is not, we're not just doing this for fun and for shits and giggles and because you like the sound of your own voice, okay? We want to be able to do this for profit. The easiest, most simplest way that you can profit from your blog is by getting people to opt in for something else from you, okay? So it's a bit like if you're walking down the street, if you're walking down the mall and you see some pretty things in the window, you're more likely to walk into that shop and go and take another look around and perhaps buy something. So it's a bit like your website, okay? Like you want to use that as a bit like your shop front. And then, like we don't want people just to kind of sit there and go, okay, that was great, awesome, thanks, you know, now what? We really want to get them to opt in for something. So if you've got a blog where you're talking about healthy living, for example, you might get people to opt in, which is where they give you their name and an email address, maybe for a live webinar or for a PDF download or a checklist or a book or some kind of call to action, all right? Because without that, people more often than not are kind of just left there sitting like, okay, great, that was, you know, that was awesome. Okay, cool, you know, now what? And I really have this big problem now that I need solved, but what do I do from here? So it's gotta be a really, very, very clear pathway. The next problem that usually arises from like, okay, we know our people, we know we need to have relevant content going up there, we know we need to get them to opt in, but how the freak do I come up with all of these different ideas? So I didn't bring a text or a Sharpie in with me, so roll with me for a second. I want you to imagine that your person is like a disco ball. All right, you know disco balls have got all the mirrors, you know, stuck all over the ball, right? And, and they shine off in different directions. Your ideal person, your client, that person that you are making this blog for is like a disco ball. They are multifaceted. They might like being out in nature and then on the other side of a disco ball, they might really love staying in five-star hotels. They might love buying really cheap, awesome, and disposable things in Kmart, but also really love shopping in designer stores. They might love being away, they might love being home. So your person is completely uh, filled with lots of different contrasts, okay? So when it comes to your blogging and to your content creation, We've got to think about all of the different facets in their lives and what they're going on and, and, and going through. So they might really need help with their mindset and other days they, they might be, you know, what it's like. Some days are really awesome and the highs are high and then other days the lows are really low. Your people are the same. So coming up with ideas for content, need to understand, all right, well, what are, what are our people's problems and what facet am I going to address in this particular piece of content or in this particular blog or if, you know, if you're marketing like with this particular uh, lead generation strategy. So you've got all of that. The next thing that we really need to start to think about is what is the logical pathway that we need to take people through because one blog will probably you know, lead on to the next blog, 
which will probably address another problem in the next blog and then address another problem in the next blog. So what we can start to do from a blogging perspective is come up with a bit of a content plan or a, um, a bit of a blogging strategy. So you see the pathway. Now what we know, and that also makes it easier for you to come up with the content that you are going to create, okay? So each blog is going to address a particular problem and things like that. Now, we know who we're gonna to talk to, we know we've got the, the multifacets. We know we're going to create content that's relevant to our people. We're going to have a call to action in there. A lot of the time, oh yay, awesome. Thanks guys. A lot of the time, the next thing that comes up is like, okay, Nick, that's really well and good. That's awesome. But how do I structure this thing? So here's what you want to do. Before you start, and I'm talking primarily around uh, like video blogging, okay? I find it a lot easier to, to speak than I do to write. Now, you might be someone who finds it a lot easier to write than it is to speak. It doesn't matter how you do it. You could even just do it in audios if you want. It, it doesn't matter. It's just important that you've got it going on out there and that you've got those call to actions in there. But how do you structure it? Now, what I like is we need to have some stories in there, okay? So it's really, I think it's really important if you're in a, a, a coaching role, a business consultancy role, if you're a, a health practitioner or maybe a lawyer or someone like that, you know, your industries are jam-packed with competitors. And a lot of people are like, well, why would I buy from you? And why would I get your help? And why should I sign up with you? And, and all this, that, and the other. So it's really in your stories and sharing your experiences that people start to build rapport with you, right? They start to feel like they know you a little bit more. So for example, uh, you know, I, as I was saying earlier at the, at the start, you know, I found it really hard to break out, to, to break the seal, when I first started blogging, doing the video vlogs, I found it really freaking hard to just be me. I found it really, really hard to speak without a whole bunch of notes. I mean, on here today, I've got one, two, three, four, five, I've got like seven dot points of what it is that I'm going through to make sure that I don't miss anything. So, you know, I, I found that a real, a really big challenge and I think, for those of you who are starting out, or for those of you who aren't consistently blogging and, and leveraging off your website, it's important for you to know, I think, that you know, I've, I've got an understanding of where you're at. You know, because otherwise it's like, oh yeah, she, you know, if, if, if you think that I just had this stuff nailed for forever, then, you know, I wouldn't know what it's like to be in your shoes. And that's what you want your stories to share, that, You've got experience either in that position where your people are now, like where you were, or that you've worked with people who have been in a similar position to them. Now, let me know that that makes sense, okay? So a lot of the time, the stories that we want to share are in order to let your people know that you get them that they're not alone, that it's not just them, that they're not stupid, that they don't have silly questions. It's just that they just don't know how to do the stuff that you know how to do, right? So the way we want to frame your story, excellent, thanks guys. The way we want to frame your stories are like this. Where were you? Okay, so where were you back then, not, not like literally where were you, unless that's relevant, but like what was your life like back then? What was going on? You know, what was it like when you had that, when you had that problem? Hey Joe, good morning. And then what we want to do is go, okay, so what did you then do? So where were you? What did you do? Specifically, what did you do? And that might be around, well, I just, I had to learn how to do this. I spent a whole bunch of time testing and measuring. It might be, you know, from a health perspective, I was so tired of feeling, of feeling sick and tired that I had to make that change. So usually that's going to demonstrate a leap of faith or a commitment that, that you have made, okay? So 
That's the second part of the story framework. The third part of the story framework is, is where are you now as a result of taking, of, of being in those, in, in those um, positions. So look, you know, where I am now is I can turn the camera on, I've got the story structure in my head, I've got the main dot points, you know, I can talk for hours, I can talk underwater with a mouthful of marbles about this stuff, you know. That is the stuff that is going to really position you as an authority and a, and a subject matter expert in your area and in your industry. Okay, because all of a sudden, maybe not all of a sudden, but as people are listening to you, they're able to get a feeling for who you are, what you're about, what makes you different, why they should listen to you versus listening to the competition. Okay, so we've got your stories in that structure. Then what you want to do, so we've got, we know all of that stuff about who we're talking to, we know the disco ball stuff, we know how the content's going to be done, we know the story structure. From a blog perspective, what happens is you start with story. Okay, so you start telling it doesn't you start telling a story. It doesn't have to be five hundred and fifty thousand words long or twenty five minutes of story. It can just be this is where I was and this is what I did and you know this is where I am now and this is why this is so damn important that you really hear this, and then you get into some content. All right, so you're going to share with your people, look, this is what it is that you need to do. This is how you are going to do it, okay? So story, content. This is what you're going to do. This is the tip. This is the piece of advice. This is the framework. Whatever it is that you are going to share with them in order to help them achieve the outcome and the result that, and solve the problem that this blog is addressing. Okay, let me know that this is making sense to you guys because I know I'm delivering a lot of words at you right now. So let me know that you're with me. Once you've got that, okay, so you've got your stories, you've got your content. If you stop there, people are just like, okay, great, that's awesome, thanks, see you later. And it's very, you know, think about it, a blog like this video, like this live is one to many, right? There, there are you, there, there's you guys that are listening right now, there's people who will listen to the recording and so on and so forth. So this is a, it's, it's almost a bit like a one-on-one -on -one conversation, but I'm having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with lots of you all at the same time. So what happens is it's very kind of generalistic advice that you give, okay? So there's no tailoring, there's no real personalization that can occur in this kind of forum. So the next logical step is, if you would like to know how to apply this in your own life, if you need some support, if you need some accountability, hey Ainsley, if you need some help with this, then this is what you need to do. All right, so what that is called technically is a call to action. You need to tell people how you can help them more. You need to let people know that they can either uh, request a one-on-one -on -one session with you, that they can buy your program, that they can buy a book, that they can go over and look at something else, right? Because in this land of an overwhelming amount of information, cookie-cutter bullshit, uh, generic, boring advice, you can be the kind that the leader that says, you know what, if, if you are really stuck with this and if you really want some help, then this is how you can get my help with this. Okay, now we've got uh, Jo Light on the call, she's a, a piano teacher. You know, if you, if you were to go through and do this, it's like, if you want to learn music in a different way, then hey, like, click that button underneath here and let's hop on the phone and see if these lessons are, are right for you. Ainsley, who's a myotherapist, you know, if you're stuck, with really accountability and moving forward and motivation, then hey, come and join Stretch School. You know, I'd, I'd love to help you with that. So you can give them a call to action that helps them take the next step. And really, if you think about it, that way they've got some results in advance from you at zero risk. They haven't given you their name, they haven't given you an email, they haven't given you a phone number, they haven't given you anything except their attention, right? 
So if you, if you do all of that for them and you've done it completely for free, it makes sense that if that, if that stuff has resonated with them, it makes sense that they go, okay, so what's the next step? You know, how can I get more help from you? And so that's where the call to action becomes important. And the call to action then logically leads to them buying from you or not buying from you, right? But generally what happens is they've had a really great experience and now they want to give you money and, and buy your stuff. Some people will and some people won't. So that's the natural progression. And that's really how you are going to make money from any kind of blogs by, by following that structure. Uh, the other thing that, so just to be clear, let's just summarize this. So you've got it all down really, really easily. Okay, we know who you're talking to. We've got the disco ball sorted and all those multifacets. You've got your content planned out. You have got the structure for your stories ready before you start rolling. You then go into the content. Then you're going to give them a call to action. Okay, so that's the structure. The next thing is, okay, that's great. What, how do I do all of that? Now, you're going to need a camera or a video camera or a phone. You will need a tripod because you don't want to be doing these kinds of blogs and, and content creation on a, on a selfie stick or anything like that, unless you're selling selfie sticks and that would be a different story. So make sure that you've got the right equipment available. You might want to have some lighting set up so that they, you, they, they can see your face really, really easily. Uh, that's probably really important for you to have. Of course, you're going to need a website right, to be able to put your, your blogs on. Now, here's the beautiful thing about this. We can create one video. Let's, let's use video blogging as an example. We can create one video. You are going to edit that video on a computer. So if you're on a Mac, you'll edit it in iMovie. If you're on PC, you may use Camtasia or something like that. Here's what I love about this stuff. What you can do is you can go and use this video on your blog. Go put it up on there with, you know, as it is right now. Put that on there. You can also upload that video straight up to YouTube so that you can get some views on there. So we've got the website that you can use the video on. We've got YouTube that you can use the video on. If you're on Vimeo, you'll put the video up to, up to there and make it public so that everybody can look at it. You can then go and upload that video to Facebook as well. You can share the link to your blog again and again and again on Facebook as well as LinkedIn. You can share the link on Instagram. Now here's a really cool thing that you can do. If you are using iMovie, I imagine that Camtasia does the same thing but I haven't tested it, I don't know. So if you use iMovie to do it, then guess what? You can also export just the audio out of the video and you could put an audio option up on your website. You could upload the audio onto your podcast, right? So you don't have to use a separate thing for a podcast. So then you can put it onto SoundCloud, you can put it onto iTunes, you can put it onto Stitcher, right? You could, and another thing that I love about this, you could go and send it to the, the video link on Vimeo, send rev.com the video link file and ask them to transcribe it. And then not only do you have the video content and the audio content, you also have the written transcript of it. So what you can do then is like tweak some of the words so that it makes sense in order to be able to, like for someone who is reading it, and then you can use the written version in different places as well. You could use it in an email, right? Oh, we haven't sent the blog out to your email list yet. I think, what are we up to? We're up to one blog, like 14 different things now. You might even be able to pull some of the paragraphs out of that transcript and use them as Facebook posts as quotes on Instagram, you know, go and put them to images, go and, like, you've got so many options for you to use one piece of content, like one blog, 
in multiple different ways. I've lost count at 15. Yeah, I've lost count at 15. Okay, also means, so, you know, if you think about it, the, a time investment for one thing, for, for sitting down or standing up and creating one, let's say one video, for you to be able to use that in 15 different areas without even, and I'm sure there's, there's probably an, another 10 that we could come up with because we haven't even mentioned LinkedIn in terms of the copy yet uh, or, or any of those other channels. So there are so many opportunities for you to be able to leverage this. But remember, the key is making sure that you have got the, the stories, the content, and a call to action because it's that call to action that is going to enable you to uh, get people enrolling in whatever it is that you're doing, signing up for whatever it is that you're doing or, or hopping on a phone call or something like that. So one of the really big things I love about this is it creates those results in advance. It gives people an experience of you without you needing to be like, in the room with them, talking to them over coffee or anything like that. And we've got the ability to use it in a myriad of different ways, which is really the, 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 the best thing about leverage, all right? Awesome. Now, super quickly, did any, I know we're, we're cutting it a little bit fine for time. Do you guys have any questions about anything at all that I can answer for you about blogging? Um, I did have a question that came through via email uh, from Sonia. Sonia asked, what equipment do I use? So for my video blogs, before my camera died a couple of weeks ago, I was using a Canon EOS 70D. And I love that camera, it's so good. So I use that. I also have two softbox, not, not for this one, not for this video, uh, not for this live, but I have two softbox lights that angle at like 45 degrees that go on the, you know, the white background that I normally do my blogging videos on. Uh, they sit there going on there and they are softbox lights. So you can go to eBay and search softbox lights. Just get the, the ones with the biggest wattage in the globes. I also have a spotlight that, um, you know, my, if my camera's like right there, the, the spotlight sits just next to that so it's a little bit hidden because these lights are going on the backdrop and your face can kind of wash out. So I have a spotlight that goes straight on me as well. And again, you can go to eBay, you could go to Bunnings, uh, doesn't really matter where you get that um, spotlight light from. What else do I have? Uh, obviously tripods, um, tripod for, for the camera. And then that's the equipment that I use. Okay, so it's really pretty straightforward. I do have a, on, on my back wall when I blog, it's a, um, it's a stick on, sticky sheet. Like my whole wall is a whiteboard wall. It's the best thing ever, I love it. Um, you could get a white blind that you pull down. I prefer that to using, sometimes you can get those backdrop kits but I find that the quality of the screen behind isn't excellent. If it gets a bit creased, it really stands out and it looks really bleh. So I, I would say a white blind, you can just get a cheap white blind in Ikea or something like that. Uh, or the whiteboard wall, if you're a, a whiteboard person, they, they rock, they're, they're really good fun. Um, then in terms of the technical stuff, I use iMovie, I've got my computer here. Uh, to make sure that you guys could hear me at the start. Um, I use iMovie. I find that is the most simple platform, if you like, or, or program application to be able to edit these, to be able to edit these videos really easily. Plus, when we upload them and send them all around the internet, it's got all of those different options in there as well, just kind of built into iMovie. And the other beautiful thing I love about iMovie is that you can export just the audio out of it so that you can use it, so you can multi-purpose the, the content really, really easily. Um, now I do host, so I do send the video once it's edited, I send it to Vimeo. 
I have a Vimeo Pro account, which I think is about $199 a year. I'm, I'm not sure on that, don't quote me on that. But it is a Vimeo Pro account, which means that I can get rid of, I, I can get rid of all of the stuff around the video. You know, when I when I put it onto my website, I didn't want it to have the title and the all of the buttons and the ugly things. I thought they just like what happens on YouTube. So I send mine up to Vimeo because you can customize the player. So that's for when I put them on my blog. When they go up to YouTube, I don't care because I don't put that on my website at all. Right? So yeah, hope that makes sense. Um, and then yeah, they just get embedded into embedded into the website every time I do a new blog, so that you guys can can see it using the link really really easily. Awesome. Alrighty. Any other? That's a good question from her. Any other questions, guys, that I can answer for you? Let me know, and I will answer them for you. Um. One of the other things I think that I just want you to remember is that it, this stuff takes practice, all right? No one expects you to be able to go and film a, a 30 minute video blog without breath, <laughs> right? Or without notes or without editing or anything like that. It becomes a hell of a lot easier, like trust me, it becomes a hell of a lot easier the more often you do it, that the easier it becomes. And it's a bit like riding. It's a bit like learning how to cook. It's a bit like riding a bike or learning how to roller skate and stuff like that. The more you do it, the easier it becomes. So it's just about taking practice, uh, about, about practicing everything, but then also having that structure handy because as I was saying like when you know when you've got that structure in your head it makes it so much easier to tailor your delivery around what it is that, that in, in the structure and in the format that it needs to be done alrighty guys well as I said happy Monday if you're listening to the recording of this or if you've got any questions that come up after we finish this live stream please make sure you go and leave them in the comment section. Uh, I'm an open book. I just want you guys to get yourselves out there. I want you making this stuff happen because your people need you. Your people need to hear from you. And you've kind of got like this duty of care. If you know how to help people, you've got to put yourself out there so that you can help them, right? Ace. All right, so my name is Nicola. I will see you next Monday. Let me have a look at mine. Let me have a look at the notes I prepared earlier. Next Monday, oh, how cool. We're talking about grit and vulnerability and being professional online. I am such a huge advocate for building resilience and accessing these parts of us that we didn't always know were necessarily there. And I think really with the, 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 you know, creating a small business, right? Building a small business, whether you are startup mode, whether you're a few years in, whether you're a seasoned pro, whether you're doing 10 grand a month, a thousand a month, a hundred grand a month, it doesn't really matter. There are key traits that we need to embrace as leaders in what we're doing. There are key things that we need to embrace in order to get us through to the next level. And I'm a, a big, big advocate and a huge believer that grit and resilience are the things that keep us going. There are some people that don't have that. And there are some people that don't want to access that or build that or learn that. And guess what? They're the ones that, that don't go the distance because it takes stamina, it takes persistence it's it, it's it's running a marathon right this is really th this this game that we're playing around building a business is it, it's a it's a marathon effort and we want to be able to do it with determination grace resilience grit and results really yeah so that's that. That's what we're going to be talking about next week. So we'll be on the, the same time, the same place, the same backwater of Facebook. And I'll share that with you. You're welcome, Chris. Uh, I can't wait to speak with you guys next week. Meanwhile, like I said, if you've got any questions, pop them below here. 
really love to hear uh, when you go out and get your first blog up if you haven't done it already. Let me know that this is helpful for you. You know, that's why, this is why I do this. All right. Have a great day. Happy Monday and have a great week. Okay. Bye.